So you already found a solution. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I find out that when I paint, I start to walk. I start to do something to get something else to think about and to sit and eat painkiller. That's not good for the body at all. So you've learned to switch your attention, to take your attention off of the pain and put your attention on something else. Yes. And as you're doing this, the pain disappears. Yes. Right. <laughs> so I have pain the whole day today. <laughs> Wonderful. Like you see here, and you sit here. <laughs> I paint more with my hair. <laughs> uh -huh. Wonderful. Only the person who is really, who's identified and has become someone, something, can be insulted or be hurt or be cheated. Not the one who has emerged its consciousness within the self, not the one who has fallen back into the I, the I am. When we start to train ourselves and bring our attention inwards and we come and we begin to look and we start to carving in we're starting to diving inwards in this journey. And in this journey that you're going in and you're kind of denying these different things, you're rejecting, you're rejecting your feelings, you're rejecting your thoughts, that when these strong thoughts come and you say, this is not what I am, this is not who I am, and when these strong emotions, they rise, you reject them and you say, I'm not these either. And you don't buy into it. And you just keep going more inside. So you're going into, let's say, this tunnel and you keep going, you don't stop. Different things starts to happen, but you don't stop. Maybe spiritual power starts to rise and all of a sudden you start to be able to manifest things or create things and heal people or do astral travel or shape shift or whatever. And you don't stop at that one either. You reject that. You say, I don't want this. You keep going in. You, you just keep going in. Because you, you have this conviction and you're really certain that I don't want anything that comes and goes. I don't believe in anything that comes and goes. Whatever it is, I don't want it. I want that which is always here. I can let go of a million different things that come and go, but I want that one thing that doesn't come and go. That's what I want. So you keep going inside. And if you stay consistent and keep going, you're gonna meet yourself. You're gonna see you're going to have an encounter with the observer, the I am. And you've had a glimpse of it. And you're going to meet that one eye to eye. You're going to be staring into the eyes of that one, which simply is always here. It's not affected by what happens, but it's simply aware of everything that comes and goes. And when you encounter that, then in that moment you begin to realize that your life has really started it. It just has begun. 
and the quality of our lives or quality of your life begin to change. In some ways, I agree, it's very confusing and it's a tough path in some ways, tough road, because it's hard to trust or to believe that this statement is real or it's true. You know, so many people may just say, well, what about the world? What about everything's happening? What about my feelings? What about my senses? What about my creativity and my power of manifestation and my thoughts? And everything is in the world. What about these things? And in your surrounding and a lot of teachings and a lot of uh, scriptures, different, different uh, writings, they're supporting this. They're supporting the idea that all this thing you see is absolutely real. So in a way, it's really tough to buy it, to buy this, to buy what I'm saying. And I don't blame you. But if you at one point decide that when I go out and I get this and I get that and I do this and I do that, and whatever I'm doing, whether it's a spiritual practice or it's a new lover or it's a new object that I got or I moved to a new place, I finally moved to a house by the beach in Caribbean. But if you examine it, you see that you have satisfaction, you're happy, but it's short term. You're not free from worries and you're not free from your mind and you're not free from anxiety and you're not free from the fear that you may get old, you may get sick and you may get lonely or you may die. And even if you work on those things, there are many, many moments that we feel lonely. This loneliness creeps in. So you have everything you want set up and you got it there. The car, the lover, money, vacation, home, ideal job, ideal home. But you're not free from this one. This one is haunting you. And the feelings come and go and the emotions come and go. And one of the fears that do come and it always creeps in is the fear that what's going to happen to me? Where am I going to be? I'm going to be left out. Or I'm lonely. I don't have anyone in my life. Or no one understands me. Nobody really gets me. Loneliness. Tell me if you experience that. Loneliness, not aloneness, loneliness. Nobody understands me, nobody knows what I feel. And that is like an epidemic, it's like a disease, a worldwide disease. The fact that we live in this individual world, separated, and nobody really understands or knows what's going on in your head and what's going on in your heart. And especially when you're going through trouble and hardship, those are the times that you feel it the most. And you're on a spotlight and things are going down and you feel like nobody really understands what's going on with me. Nobody really can feel my feelings. And that eats, eats up through you. And we may be doing this and that, and we may be, you know, having kids around us, have a partner, you have your dog and cat and horse, and you just try to surround yourself with whatever, humans or pets, 